So we've talked a lot about a lot of things, and we really want to get this in, and this is the perfect place to do it. you got to get out ahead of it. So how do you get out ahead of it? We want to talk about meditation because meditation clears your mind and when your mind is clear, your vibration rises and that's the best way to get out ahead of it. But there's something that is a practical application that you could do many times in every day and that is segment intending. We want to describe what we mean by that because we have an updated way of describing it to you since calibration is part of our conversation now. We just want to say to you that what calibration is, calibration is not trying to fix something because that calibrates you to the problem. Every time you try to fix something, you calibrate to the problem. So what true calibration is, is to find something in your now that you can focus on that hooks you to your power, to your clarity, to your source, to your strength. And then you take that calibrated, good-feeling being into the world or into a memory or into a thought or into something else. So you tune yourself and then you go somewhere where the law of attraction can reflect back to you what you've got calibrated. Deliberate creation is deliberate calibration. Imagine, there's a basketball player in the NBA, what do you think he does during practice? He calibrates. He's been doing it for a long time. He's calibrating his muscle strength and his hand-eye coordination and the distance, and in many cases it feels innate. And he can, without thinking, it usually works best, he can, because of what he's learned, because of all of the calibration he's done, he can pop that basketball in the direction of the hoop, and it can go in because he has calibrated that. So that's a physical calibration. There's lots of physics. Esther can calculate how long it will take her to get someplace by how fast she is driving given the fact that there's no traffic. There's a certain physical calibration that she can do. But there are other factors to factor in that she doesn't have control over, like traffic, that she can't calibrate in terms of just the physics laws of the universe. Those laws of physics of your world will take you so far, but there's a whole bunch of other calibration of thought and calibration of vibration that people aren't taking into consideration. Just stay with us a little bit. This is going to make sense to all of you. So the basketball player knows how fast he can run. He knows how he feels today. He knows how to develop his muscles. He's learned about his hand-eye coordination. He's practiced enough that the odds are pretty good that when he's standing there on the free throw line uncontested that he can make the basket. But does he always? Isn't it ridiculous how often those guys miss? (laughs) With no one climbing on them, no one in their face, no one hurting them in the moment, no one defending the goal, there's no one standing up there slapping it out of the way. It's just them and the rim and the ball and they miss. What's up with that? Well... They did the physics calibration. They've got that down, and really, on a good day, they can hit most of them. But what happens in the game? Who gets in their head? What's going on? Fans, most of the arena sometimes doesn't want them to hit it. Most of the arena will jump for joy when they miss. Most of the arena will mock them while they're trying to hit it. Boo, 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 waving things behind the line. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Die, 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 the crowd is saying. (laughs) So they've calibrated the physics part of it, but are they stable in the rest of it? Are they so at one with their inner being? that the whole rest of the world could be rooting against them and it would not matter because they're in sync with pure positive energy and the powers. You see what we're getting at? Most people are not even considering true calibration. Calibration is hooking up with source and source is already hooked up with who you are and what you want and the law of attraction is predominantly responding to that and there's no reason for any of you to not get exactly what you want every time except that you're taken into consideration consideration too much of what somebody else is thinking about you in the same moment. And that's just a natural habit because most of you have been calibrating to them your whole life. 
because you didn't know about your inner being. You didn't know what your emotions were telling you. You didn't know that there was another point that you could calibrate to. So our diagnosis of you, <laughs> you're trying too hard. Most of all, trying to please others. And in your effort at pleasing others, you're not pleasing yourself, and then you condemn yourself for even trying to please yourself. And we just want so much for you to know that when you feel good, it is so good. And when you feel thrilled, it is so good. And when you feel clear-minded, it is so good. And when you feel happy, it is so good. And when you feel wonderful, it is so good because that's who you really are. And nothing else will do for you. Nothing else will do for you. Nothing else will do for you. Everything else is off for you. But nobody's going to do it for you. But nobody's going to do it against you either because nobody else has the power. So now think about where we started today. We started by explaining to you the point of attraction that your inner being is. One who's connected to that is millions of times more powerful than any who aren't. So imagine the attraction power of your inner being. If you just let go a little bit of the things that are troubling you and worrying you, you'd be drawn right into who you are. And in time, what happens to you? You don't give a rip what anybody else thinks because they don't really know what they think. They're all over the place. It was never their job to please you or to like you or to support you or to condemn you. They are not an issue in your connection what they are is valuable to your calibrating what you want and don't want that's what you all are for each other not one of you is the stream that flows to another what you all are is evidence of a stream flowing and evidence of the degree to which you are allowing yourself to be in the stream and allowing the stream to flow toward who you are and what you want you see so your blessed mother doing the best that she can doing the only thing that was your agreement with her, she provided an avenue for you into physical. But she did so much more than that. She provided an opportunity for you to calibrate your awareness of what doesn't feel good and what does feel good and what doesn't feel good and what does feel good. She helped you to know at an early age, do you know, here you are at this young, 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 young age, knowing unequivocally what you want and how you would like the world to be. Wanting kindness and stability and ease and flow and power and unfolding. That's what you've come to know. And while she represented something quite different, her different representation is the reason that you're so clear about what you want. And it's also the reason that so much is going to go so well for you your whole life now that you've found this piece of all of that, you see. We take that to an extreme when we offer our favorite example. So here you are in this world of interconnection through the internet and all of the social media that you have. And so you decide that you're going to live the perfect world and you decide that those people out there are the perfect people to make that happen because you're misguided. And so you say, I put up my profile and a whole list of things that I need and want from the world and from others. And you say in your description, to everyone, take a look at this picture, this is me, and when you run into me, and you might, because I'm out there getting around, when you see me, I need these things from you. <laughs> or, you could calibrate to your inner being and only meet up with those who are vibrational match to who you really are. <laughs> so, we want it to feel as absurd to you to ask something from your partner, as in this example, when we were saying you should ask it from the whole planet. We want it to feel that absurd, because it is that absurd. To say, be away from me and feel away from me so that I can feel something. Ah. What you want to say is, hey, I'm going to do my best to tune in, and I'm living happily ever after and you're really fun to hang around with, and when we do it together, it'll be extra dynamic, but whether you join me in that or not, that's where I'm going. So sometimes we'll click, and sometimes we won't, and sometimes we'll click, and sometimes we won't, but I'm not putting any of this off on you, because that's disempowering to me, and confusing to you. You see, we don't even want you to calibrate to Abraham through Esther. We want you to calibrate to your source energy, to your own source energy. And you do that by caring about how you feel and feeling by feeling, reaching for what feels better. And the way to do this, you see, now this brings us to another conversation about the law of attraction. Sometimes you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and the more specific you get, the more delicious it is. Because when you're tuned in, think about this. Some years ago, we used to offer this analogy. You're going to like it. 
So you've taken a child of yours or somebody you know, a little kid, and you've taken them to a place where there are wonderful things to purchase. And this child is in love with life and lighted up by everything she sees. And you are in love with life too, and you just cannot find enough ways to flow loveliness to this child. You can kind of feel that, can't you? Now, in your story, take an ornery little girl with you who's in a rotten mood and she is demanding you to do something to make her feel better. So her attitude shows it, her tone of voice shows it, her demeanor shows it, and she wants that and that and that and that and that. How do you feel? You want to give her everything or you want to take her home? You want to go home and leave her there. <laughs> We're talking about attraction, attraction, attraction. So when you're tuned in to who you really are, the analogy that we offer sometimes is, imagine this platform is a board of LED lights, thousands of lights on this board, and you're thinking about something and you light up, that's you. Now, every other being or consciousness in the vicinity that resonates with what you've got lighted will light up and that's your world. Those are the people you're going to meet. Those are the conversations you're going to have. Those are the memories that are going to come to your mind. That's why you think of what you think of whenever you think of. And so to get out ahead of it and to deliberately light your light, to meditate and light your light, or to segment and tend and light your light, to calibrate to your source before you go rather than stumble into a condition and let whatever the condition is light your light. You don't want the world to calibrate you. You want to be calibrated and then go into the world. Because when you deliberately calibrate and you go out into the world, then you resonate and what comes to you is what is a vibrational match to you. And whether it's out into the world of strangers or whether it's into the world of a human you're living with, that human has as many varieties of lights that could light up as the whole universe because that person is a microcosm of the whole world. But what happens with the human is you've already formed an opinion and you've got an expectation and you've already calibrated to what you think that is. So you can't get something different than what you've been getting if you don't like it. Or even if you do like it, you get what you are expecting to get. Expectation is a strong, strong, strong emotion, isn't it? We're stirring you up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. People in your world aren't giving you what you want because they're deliberately holding out. They're giving you who they are in this moment. And the reason that they are who they are in your life in this moment is because of what you're broadcasting. <laughs> so what you really want to say instead of, I don't like your behavior, what you want to say is, I don't like the behavior I expected from you and I'm getting. I need to go calibrate. <laughs> or what you're saying is, I don't like the you that I've created through my powerful expectation. Don't say any of that to them because it'll just cause a fight. But <laughs> we want you to understand that you get what you expect. And so life has been calibrating you. Life has been calibrating you and the same time that life has been calibrating you, Source has been receiving the calibration of what you really want. Isn't that glorious to know? So in any moment, you can lean in the direction of what sources received from your experience. When someone's hateful, you want more love. When someone's starving, you want them to eat. When someone's confused, you want clarity for them or for you. There's this magnificent world that you have been creating that you have easy access to, but you can't keep facing the current reality and calibrating to the current reality and live the world that you deserve and that you've created and that you want. Nice to know. <laughs> really good. Really good.